So I'll just put this in share mode and we shall begin. Yeah, I think we're on. Hi guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, what's about time? You're watching this video. I hope your day is going well or has been going well. My name is Uzama Kokafor and you know what? I don't really have the strength to start going through this is where I'm and all that. So if you're just seeing my content for the first time, please just um, take a minute or two to find out to learn more about where I am and what I do. Some of the things I do. Yeah. So I just want to discuss how to build a stable income freelancing. And let me just tell you a quick what inspired this record recording and everything. So last two months, yeah, two months ago, a friend had a conference and he wanted me to speak on this topic. And when I asked him, um, okay, what's the goal? He gave me a topic. I, I took this topic a bit. I think what he gave me was, um, I can't remember exactly how it was, but I just tweaked it a bit, but it was just something very similar to this. And when I asked him, okay, so why, why this topic? What exactly do you want people to gain out of this session with me? And he said... A lot of people, especially Nigerians, because the conference was targeted at, targeted at Nigerians, but it's, it's still a conference that would benefit anybody, really. So he said a lot of Nigerians have this misconception about freelancing, which is basically, or which has been, be the misconception has been mainly inspired by what people see online. Do you get, like, how people post? And, you know, online, you see so many things, the good, the bad, people that motivate you, you also see things that could um, make you lose morale. Well, put it that way. You also see things that make you lose morale. So a lot of people have seen things that made them lose morale about freelancing. And when you say something like freelancing to them, or when you talk about freelancing to them, or when you want to discuss freelancing with them, they just think it's something that that is overhyped. That can work for almost every other person, but not them, or that um, people will really say they are freelancing they just feel colleague work that it's not going to work for them. So he invited me to speak about building a stable income stream freelancing and how to assess international opportunities. Yeah, that one was there to how to assess international opportunities. So I'm just going to go into um into that in this topic. Then spoiler alert, which is not really a spoiler alert anyways, some of the things I'll say in this um video could be paradoxical. And what I mean by that is it could sound like I am saying the opposite of what I am trying to gain or achieve or what this topic is about. But if you stick to the end or if you listen attentively, you would understand that I'm actually not being paradoxical. I am just really, really addressing this topic. So let's get into it. So this is what I hope you achieve out of um you get out of this session. I want you to get actionable tips. Now, the challenge usually is that um, I'm sure there are lots of videos or blog posts or content or whatever really that has discussed this topic I'm about to discuss. But what I just really try to do is, and why mine stands out is because I'm really talking to you out of experience. Do you get? Um, I'm not just talking to you out of trying to create content or whatever. I'm not you're yeah, really a YouTube person, so it's not like. I'm trying to look for content for, just to post on my YouTube channel or anything. So what I really hope you get are actionable tips. When I mean actionable tips, what I mean is something that you can, as you're listening to this conf this is not a conference, as you're listening to this session, this video, you're writing things down, you are bringing out your stick-ons or I don't know how you plan your life. I use stickers. Like if I really need to get something done, I have colorful stickers that I just write and I stick on. I don't know how you plan your life. So if you use calendars, if you use stickers, what I'm hoping is that you get, you pause this video at this point, you get a jotter, you get a pen and you write, these are the things I'm going to do. And some of the things you have to do are long-term things Do you get. So for example, I'm going to talk about creating content and every other thing. You know that these are things you have to do long-term consistently. It's not something you just want and you move on with your life or whatever. So what I'm hoping you, you do, you get out of this conference, this session, what am I calling it a conference? Are actionable tips that can help you or that will help you 
really um achieve the goal of this topic yeah now first thing i say is how to create a stable income as a freelancer and assess international opportunities simply what i mean by assessing international opportunities and if you're nigerian or an african or whatever you understand how important it is to assess international opportunities it is more important for you than even any other person in any other part of the world do you get and that is because currency strength of the currency is not so great a lot of people I mean, a lot of people who are even going to freelance in these days do it because of the strength of the currency. Do you get? It's not for us or for people in Nigeria. Nigeria. For people in Nigeria, it's more about surviving. Do you get? So for people in Nigeria, it's more about surviving. And that is why a lot of people go into freelance and to have to earn from international job markets, international to gain, have access to international opportunities that helps them earn better. Do you get? So, yeah, which is why um, assessing international opportunities is um, part of the topic for this session. So I say number one, freelancing as a business and not a side hustle. I'm going to explain everything. Consider going. So these are the points I'm going to cover in this, um, in this topic. Now, what I mean by tracing freelancing as a business, let me explain a common scenario. And I know it's common because it was my experience. It's a couple of friends I also have, a couple of yeah people that also do freelancing. This has also been the experience. Most of us, or let me not say most of us, but quite a good number of us got into freelancing as Mika is one whole belly first, or my hold this one for hand first. Do you get so me? I got into freelancing. Um how did I get into freelance? I know I've said this story countless, countless times. So, okay, yeah, I was basically looking for them after school, after service. I was looking for work. Um, Nothing was forthcoming. Then I remembered uh, um, I had done this class a while ago when I was seven on, that was on Fiverr. Yeah, on Fiverr. It was by Emmanuel, Emmanuel Abbey. We were we served together and all that, and he had a class on fiber and copywriting. Yes, I'm trying to remember the year now. Twenty. That was probably. Well, it doesn't matter. But I just know that I had I had done this class on fiber, and I remember I know did the class hundred percent seriously, or I did take the class seriously, but I did not implement. Which is why I said what I want you guys to do is take actions, but I did not implement at the time of taking the class. So I'm. Um, I since took, I remembered, oh, um, there's this class I took and it was talking about freelancing and every other thing. Um, let me get back to it. No. Yes. So basically that. So I know I went on Fiverr and I tried for a while and I'm like, I'm not getting clients or whatever, which is, which, which is why I said earlier, some people try to start freelancing and they're like, they're not getting clients for one, two, three months and they feel it's probably a scam or it's probably just something they will never experience for themselves. Do you get so that was also my 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 story in the beginning. I just I tried for two three weeks. I, I I didn't even try for months. Let me be honest with you guys. I did not try for months, and I did not get any clients. So I of course in between all that I was still looking for a job, and then yeah I just started pitching my services, my skills. I will see I can write to in case anybody has any gig that kind of thing. Do you, I did not even really understand it as freelancing then. All I just knew is that I need money. Do you get so. And this is what I can do to get that money. Like I can write. So if anybody has any articles or something, just let me know. So um, fortunately, one time, the very first client I had, um, someone referred me to him and told me, this guy is jolly high as writers. You get the first two, three times anyways, that I spoke with him that I wanted to, that I could write and everything. It was like he did not have any gigs for me. Then one night around 12, I remember it was around 12 because I was about to sleep. And I turned off my data. And for some reason, I turned it back on. And as soon as I turned it back on, I saw this message from this guy. I was like, I have a gig for you, but I really need it tomorrow. So less than 24 hours delivery, that's what he basically wanted. And I don't need it something. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can't do it. So he sent me the brief and I did it. And it was a very good work. And he was very pleased. And that was how he said I get. That was just how I got into freelancing, if I put it that way. So... Now, why I'm telling why I told you the story, why I tell you the story is because it was I did not think of when I started when I was looking for gigs or whatever, 
I was not thinking of it that this is where I'll get start making money from. I just needed it. I just needed to get something I could be doing till I found a job. Do you get? So I started that, and the pay was not fantabulous. Do you get? But I continued with that, and then one time, now this client was a Nigerian. This client was a Nigerian, so of course the pay was in error. It's not like Nigerians can't pay you dollars, but you understand, like the pay was in error. So it's not like the pay was, oh my God, amazing. And basically the pay was um, per word count. So it was just like, how many words are you able to write? Do you get? Which is usually very different from what you find on Fiverr and Upwork and Abred, I think, because usually projects on Fiverr and Upwork are per contract, per project. Do you get? They don't tell you, well, they actually do. But they don't say like $1 for one word. Many of them would just be like, um, I need the 1,500 word that's cool, and this is how much I'm going to pay you. They don't really say um, it's one dollar for a word or whatever. I'm just trying to explain that properly. So from there, I then stumbled into Upwork. And why I say stumbled, it was just a very big, it was so this person I was writing for sent me a gig one time, like a, a topic or whatever. It was different from what I had been writing, and I was not very used to the topic. So I just copied and pasted what he sent to me, either on browser, on my browser. And I saw this work posted on Upwork. So I tried, I had opened an Upwork. So even then I remembered that I had opened an Upwork account. I don't know when I opened that account in my life, but I did not just go on with it. Do you get so I found that this work was posted on Upwork for $30, but was going to be paid $1,750 for this act, for this work. And $30 then was like 11 k And by the conversion rate that, that year, it was 10000 something. It was not 11 k but it was almost 11 k So I saw that I'm like, how? Like, I'm going to be paid one, less than 2 k for this work. And this work is actually about 10 k do you get so i was just very i was like i have then it means i just have to start like i mean i have to go back to find a way to to start earning in foreign currency so basically what i'm, what I'm trying to say is most of us get or a lot of us got into freelancing as let me just make some money while i'm looking for a job do you get so i know anything you approach with that it's usually it's how you approach things or it's the kind of mindset you have towards things that determines how you're going to treat it in the first place and how far you're going to go or how not far you're going to go. So a lot of us treat freelancing as a side hustle. Many people treat freelancing as a side hustle or side hustle may not even be bad because if they don't treat it as a business. Let me just put it that way. But freelancing is a business. That's what you have to understand. It's even more of, it's even more a business than traditional work life because with freelancing you have to really do a lot of things yourself which are which are the things i'm going to talk about right now i said how to treat freelancing as a business and not a side hustle is set a system that attracts clients to you you easily get tired if you're always hunting so let me just use the analogy of let me say you're looking for a bib in the beginning which is which is what i found out really goes on especially if you are hooked on upwork or fiverr or any of other all these freelance platforms in the beginning, it's usually very interesting. It's usually very sweet when you write a proposal. Like, let me say you've, you've gotten very good at writing proposals, or you have a very, you've gotten, you started getting clients, your profile is standing out, you've gotten very good at writing proposals and every other thing. So it's just very, there's this ego or satisfaction that comes with a client posting a job and you submit a proposal for that job and you get the job. In the beginning, it's very nice. Do you get It's very, like, oh my God, I submitted a proposal and I got it and I got the job. It's just usually very it's like you're checking a girl, you're checking your or your boy, whichever gender you check. Okay, it's mainly guys that try do the check in, but whatever. It's like you're checking a girl and you check the first girl and she agrees, like your spec, and you just start feeling yourself like ah I mean, like you start feeling like you're very fine boy or whatever, or you have the skills, you get lines, all those kind of things. But the truth is, at the point it gets tiring. It it's honestly gets tiring of um, tiring when you always have to do the hunting or when you always have to hunt. Do you get what is usually more interesting? You just you need to build a system for yourself that brings people to you. 
in the beginning you have to do a lot of hunting and what i mean by hunting in this in this in this regard is you have to do a lot of pitching you have to do a lot of sending messages to clients you have to do a lot of code pitching code emailing writing proposals and every other thing but what i just want to let you understand is that if you want to build a stable income freelancing you have to even while pitching and while doing every other thing you have to build a system that brings these clients to you and the good thing is with um social media half of that work is done with social media with websites it's basically online tools half of that work is done now i say how do you do that i say social media i say as a freelancer you're a brand and your social media is your company page so as a freelancer you have to understand that you are now the brand you are now the company you are working for yourself so you have to carry it's, it's, it's no longer like you're working in a company and you have your own social media page where you can just post about anything you want to post about unfortunately it's not really like that anymore do you get now you also understand that your social media page is where potential clients are and if they want to hire you they have to look through what have you posted and that is the only way they can make a decision about but hiring you or not and even beyond hiring you it's also where you can attract clients for yourself and what i mean by that is even if you're not actively looking for a job or you're not sending proposals or whatever at at that point with your social media page you can get people that can just tell you oh um i saw your profile i get that i saw your profile a lot i saw your profile on xyz please and i'm just wondering if you're looking for a job or if you are if you are available to take a gig or something like that, this is you attracting the kind of clients you want using your social media. Now I'm not here to discuss how to build your social media or whatever, but I just really need to understand that. Excuse me, your social media as a freelancer is your company page, is your company profile. You know how you would want to know about maybe whatever company it is you want to know about and you go on facebook or you go on twitter or you go on linkedin and you type that company if you're looking for a company or you're looking for a service and a company pops up but the company's page is not good or it's just scattered or it's not aligned or it's not professional or it's not looking good chances are that you think that their social media is a reflection of the kind of service they offer and you just rather go for another company that has a better social media page or a better social media presence and everything and chances are also there that if you look for a company online and you do not find them then you're just going to think it's a scam even if they're real even if they're legit but as far as they're not online you're just going to feel like oh, there's something shady probably this company is not a real company that is the same way you are as a, as as um as a freelancer you are now a brand you are now a person i know someone that has that said that why she got a job on upwork was because of her profile on linkedin now this client on upwork started the whole um how did i put it now the person says here um you know how this some people okay i don't know if everybody knows but on upwork how people how um jobs are gotten on upwork is clients post jobs on upwork and freelancers apply for those jobs they get so this client posted a job a job on upwork she applied for a center proposal and this client hired her amongst other freelancers like Despite other freelancers that probably had better proposals, I don't know. But this client said that she hired her because of her profile on LinkedIn. So what that means is the client read her proposal and took it a step further to search her on LinkedIn. And she liked the content she, shown, she, shown, she saw on LinkedIn. You get. Now, it could be tedious or it could... You don't even really need to build all your social media handles or build all your social media profiles what you just need to do is ask yourself the kind of clients you're looking for where are you most likely to find them what social media platforms are you most likely to find them is it facebook is it linkedin is it twitter is it um what are the social media um, what's it called instagram just think where are you most likely to find the kind of clients you want then you can just pick two or three of these platforms and focus on them what i recommend is that LinkedIn is very important, especially when you're talking about assessing international opportunities. Facebook is just mainly, Facebook kind of limits your audience. You don't really, your content does not really reach people outside your country. You're, I, I don't think, yeah, your content does not really reach people outside your country. But with LinkedIn, it could be in Nigeria posting from wherever in Nigeria and people from different parts of the world are able to communicate and engage with your content 
Do you get? So as a freelancer, I would really recommend you focus on LinkedIn. Then you can think of two or three other profiles that could really help you with the kind of work you do. So I say your buyer and your content should reflect the, um, the services you offer. As I said, I'm not here to discuss um, how to post on social media or whatever. But what you should just understand is the kind of content you post should engage your audience, should educate your audience on the service you offer. And in engaging in educating your audience on the kind of service you offer, what you are basically doing or typically doing is proving your expertise, proving your authority. Do you get? That is basically what you're doing with your social media. Another thing I talked about is investing in blogs or websites. If if it's not really something you can do yet, then you should probably um you can leverage on on platforms. So what I mean by that is let me say you write. I'm going to begin a lot of examples of writing because that is what I know more about. But I'm also going to think of um other kind of services. And disclaimer, it's not only writing you can offer the freelance service. Do you get because I get that um question a lot like i don't i don't write can i be a freelancer yes you can be a freelancer freelancing is not for writers freelancing is a business model so just think of how you can offer your services as a freelancer whatever service it is so let me say um you write it would be good to have a website yeah it could it's called it could be called a portfolio website where you just post um samples of work you've done for other clients or maybe samples you've created yourself you get and why that is important is because and why why that is important is because people want to know or have um a feel of the kind of service you can deliver for them talk is cheap it's easy to say if i write for you um your your traffic will increase or whatever whatever will happen it's it's just it's very easy to say that but what is usually more impactful and what helps more is when people see can go to your website and can go to your blog and see samples of what you have written. Do you get? But if you cannot build, maybe you cannot afford to have a website or a blog yet. Maybe you're just starting up and you don't have the money to pay for a website or whatever it is. What you can do is leverage on platforms. Platforms could be Medium. You can probably publish your works on Medium. When a client asks you, oh, can I see samples of your work? You can just send them a Medium link. You can publish your work on, I think, Wix. Yeah, I think Wix is free. And it's like a website. You can build a website on Wix and it's free. You can publish your works on Wix. If you're a, a designer, I, I think GitHub is for designers. And Behance, Behance, I don't know. If I'm wrong, please correct me in the comment section. So I'm just basically saying, if you do not have the money to, to build your own, um, what's it called, website or blog yet or whatever it is, you can leverage on these platforms. Just look for... Platforms that that um, offers you the opportunities to leverage on them related to the service you offer. I mentioned GitHub, I mentioned um, Medium, I mentioned Behance, I have mentioned which other one now. Um, I think there's Tableau SQL, and as for those that are into data analytics, no, not Tableau SQL. Yeah, Tableau, Tableau. I think I don't know if it's called Tableau. No, it's not called Tableau SQL. Whatever, but any service you offer, just think of a platform that offers you the opportunity to leverage on them for free. Another thing I talk about is leveraging on other websites, which is a bit similar to what I've just talked about, but not really. Now, what I mean by leveraging on other websites is, let me give you an example. Um, as I said, I'll be, I'm talking from experience. I'm going, I'm going to give you like a short story. There was one time I wanted to apply for a job or I applied for a job. Okay, I wanted to. And the person, it was, it had to do with writing. And the person I was hiring was like, he has gotten a, a, enough applicants so he's not taking any application again so i told him i have works published on bella niger i can write very well and he told me are you serious share the links to the works and i shared the links to the work i had published on bella niger and in two minutes this guy sent me um contracts like because it was supposed to be two months contracts so just a short term gig supposed to be two months contract so he sent me the contract form and employment form or whatever it is and I got the job. Now this was someone that said he's no more taking applications because he has gotten a lot of applications. But I I before so, um, applying for that job I had already it's not like I knew and honestly speaking now I think of it I do not even know how this was going to be beneficial to me in the future. But I just seen that Melanie is a great platform. 
I mean, they have like hundreds or thousands or whatever of, of visitors. And before I even get published on Bella Niger, they don't just accept any publication. They have like the whole reviewing process do you get. So for it to be published on Bella Niger, it just gives you that like, oh, you were published on Bella Niger. I don't even think that guy read what I sent to him, honestly speaking, because it was, he sent me the contract form to fill in literally like almost as in literally almost two minutes and i think he just only shared, shared the links because he wanted to really verify that i was being honest that i've actually been published on bella niger do you get this was me leveraging on other websites so what i said now is leveraging on other websites publish on other websites that are, uh, are known for the skills or the service you offer and what that does is it makes you recognize and authority in what you do and it makes you um it increases your popularity and acceptance so sometimes Apart from that work, I know I've also used Bella Niger to flex. No, let me not call it to flex, but I've also used Bella Niger to get something I also wanted before. Even though it was not a paid role, it was a volunteering role, but they were like, oh, they're not more accepting people. And I really wanted to like volunteer with the um volunteer there. So I told them, oh, I've actually been published here. And they're like, oh, seriously? Okay, oh, yeah, come on board. So as even if you have a blog, even if you, even if you have a website, even if you have whatever it is, it helps you to reach more people. To, it increases your reach when you leverage on other platforms or other people's websites, especially websites that are related to the service you offer. So at this point, I want you to think, if you could pause the video, I want you to just really think what platforms offer the services or are known or have a column or have a page or whatever on their blog or on their it could it may not even be a website at this stage because so many things are have gone beyond websites it could be their social media handle it could be whatever platform they have so you can just think of what businesses or what platforms can i publish my work on that have the audience i am looking for do you get so when you think of such places sometimes it's bella niger does not pay well um, it's been a while I wrote for them, but as I, when I used to write, like act, they don't pay, from to the best of my knowledge. If they if they now pay contributors, it's a new thing, but they don't pay. So what I'm what I'm telling you this now is because the, these platforms you may write so you may write for they may not pay you, but they could have a way that popularity brings to you, that acceptance it brings to you is a form of payment. I know. Saying um, exposure, I'll pay you with exposure. It sounds like a very silly thing, but sometimes that's actually a currency. Because imagine I did not write on Bella Niger because I'm like, oh, these guys don't pay. I would have missed the opportunity of getting that job I wanted and uh, that volunteering experience I wanted to get. So what I'm saying is, even if these platforms you want to write on or you want to publish on or whatever, don't pay. What you have to think is, am I, am I target audience here? What could be the future benefit of publishing on this platform do you get so basically that's just what you're calculating so i said um code emailing and code pitching let me tell you you could grow in yes you could there's a stage in your freelancing business where you may we all have and um, we're all ambitious do you get when i said freelancing or when i said that on on upwork i'm like i'm just very i'm just i was just going to be very happy with 20 pounds 20 dollars Getting paid twenty dollars for one thousand word articles, but the point, I'm like, nah. I said I calculating. Okay, this is how much I want to make this month, and if I'm getting paid twenty dollars per article, of which Apple could still collect their commission, then it means that I'm not going to hit this target. So I need to start getting paid this other amount. You get, and the client I worked for, or the first client I got on Apple. Let me put it that way. We worked together for a year plus, but when I met him, like, see, I need my, my, my money increased. He increased it once or twice, but it wasn't still what I wanted. Do you get this? It was still a far mark from what I wanted. And even though, like, I was the highest paying, I was the writer who was paying the highest on his team, he could not afford to pay me more, which was what he told me because it was his personal business he was running. And he was using his personal money to run it. Of course, not my money he was using. But he was using, he was not yet making um, so much profit from the business. So he couldn't quite afford to pay me what I wanted consistently. So unfortunately, we had to part ways. What I'm saying that now is because as, you're, as you continue working as a freelancer or whatever, as you continue freelancing, you'll find out that your needs to start growing. 
you are your what you want your target your goals will start growing and the clients you have now may not be able to sustain you in the long run so what happens you have to probably start cold emailing or cold pitching more people so always reach out to potential clients and why i say that is because you don't need to wait till maybe you everybody knows what happened during covid a lot of people stopped working a lot of people lost their jobs and whatever and uh, but if you if if you have not been how they say to marketing now refilling your gene pool i think it's called the gene pool or whatever what that means is just no, it's not called the gene pool please i think that's biology if forgive me <laughs> if you have not been refilling your reaching out to potential clients basically if you've not been with your leads it's just called leads i don't know what i'm looking for technical terms if you've not been having keeping i'm um, having more leads or whatever you find out that a client to client can just say um I don't have work for you this month or i'm sorry xyz happened we cannot continue we're sorry to let you go it's only sorry they'll tell you it's not that they can tell you anything more than that and then you find yourself not knowing what to do again do you get so what i mean is always have always reach out to potential clients which also takes us back to what i said in the beginning or the very first thing i said about creating a system that attracts people to you. So you don't always have to do reach, do reach out. But sometimes you have to do the reaching out. There are some kinds of clients you want, or there are some calibers of clients you want, or there are some things you want that the system you have built at this point may ha, may not ha, be attracting those people yet. Do you guess? Or even if you can attract those people, those people may not really be coming to you because it's one thing to attract somebody. It's another thing to ask for that person to actually come to you. So you may have a social media that has been attracting these people or whatever. And you may even find out that you're called emailing or code pitching. So the person like, oh, I've actually seen your, your profile and I, I actually had it in mind to, to reach out to you, but work has just been there or one excuse or another thing. So you actually have to keep code emailing or code pitching. Do you get what you're just basically doing is making sure that at any time you want a client or at any time a client is and um, we don't need your services and any, anymore or whatever you have somebody that can you can you can use to replace that client now another thing i talk about is uh, about treating, now remember i said you're treating freelancing as a business and the business part of this is not just marketing as a freelancer you're everything to your business especially when you begin and even maybe the one, two, three years, you are the marketer, you are the finance person, you are the accountant, you are the, you're basically everything. You're all the departments in one. And the thing, one mistake, and I have also been very guilty of this, so it's not like I'm shading anybody that, I, I'm shading myself too. I'm on this table that I'm shaking, is that when you do not treat, when you, most of the money we make, or most of the money you make as a freelancer, all of the money you make as a freelancer is not yours to keep. It's a business. You should have a percentage you pay yourself. And what you're doing with the other percentage is reinvesting into the business or saving for future reinvestments. It's like a company. If a company spends all the money they have, they do not, they do not keep some apart for them, say, um, if a laptop spoils or if... A machinery in the company spoils. This is the money we're going to re use to replace it. Or if, if this comes up, this is what we're going to use to replace it. If you do not keep some money for marketing or whatever it is, then the business is going to collapse. Do you get? But as freelancers, we is usually very easy to think that every money you earn as a freelancer is just to keep, which is not true. So what I recommend is either you have a salary you pay yourself, like every month I'm going to pay myself X amount, or which I even think is preferable. You tell yourself this is the percentage of the of the money I get I'm going to pay myself. Give yourself a reasonable percent so you're not tempted to gonna start pinching from the other percent you're supposed to be saving to invest in the business. And if you're not happy with that percentage that you have told yourself you're going to be paying yourself. Then what you just need to do is know is that your company is not making the gain it's supposed to be making. So what are you going to do? Either you find new clients or the product clients you have, you build them more. But you you know how in fact just find new clients. Either you find new clients that can pay you what you want. Or yes, you can build your present clients more, but what you just have to think about is 
if you really think this, the money they're paying you is not commensurate with the service you're offering, you can, of course, happily build them. But if you feel like I build them, you could just be like, they may not really be, of course, you have to gauge your clients to know, can this person actually pay me more? on And how much more can this person pay me? Do you get, so if you're thinking that this money I'm earning is really not what I want to be earning, then you know that billing them more will not be the solution. So you have to start thinking of getting new clients that can pay you actually what you want to be paid. Or you have to start thinking of what other services can I offer the clients I have so they can pay me more and they don't have to pay that extra money they would have paid someone else. You get. So I said, and why I said um, you should keep some of the money, um, that all of the money you earn as a freelancer is not just to keep it because you have to invest in the business. You have to, you may have to pay for um, advertisement. And if you remember, I said leverage on other websites. So websites you may write to that you want to maybe publish your work or whatever, they may ask you to pay. There's actually some websites you pay to get published on. It's not every website that pays you to get published, um, to publish, if they publish your work. Some of them actually pub, um, pay them to publish your work. So if it's the, if that's the case, this is what the, the money you earn is for. In fact, this is what the money your company earns is for. Do you get? You put some of the money in advertisement. If you think there are tools you need that will help you do your work better, you have to pay for those tools. So, for example, when I started writing, I did not have a laptop of my own. My laptop has spoiled. The one I was using in university had um, crashed. I was using my phone a lot of the time, and I was also using my sister-in-law's laptop. But there would be times she would need her laptop, of course. So my I was using my phone and my sister-in-law's laptop. But I was also able to save from the money I was earning as a freelancer to buy a laptop for myself. So imagine if uh, every single money I earned, I was always taking it 100% of, like, it's mine to spend. And I was not reinvesting into the business. Of course, I will not have my own laptop. So that's just basically what I'm saying. You have to reinvest in the business. Investing could be take the form of advertisements, like paying for, to, for advertisements. It could take the form of paying for courses. So if there's a course or a program, you feel, oh, I need to learn how to do this so I can offer better service to my clients and I can so I can be paid more. It would be good to use the money your company. You are the company. So but let me just say your company. So you don't start thinking. So you think of it as a comp from a business perspective. You can take some of the money your company earns to fund that. If it's a gadget you need, in my case it was a laptop. And as your business grows, you may start finding out you need more things. It could also be a tool. It could be if you're right. I'm using writing again. Okay. Let me try to think of another skill. Maybe if you design, it could be having to pay for Adobe Illustrator. I don't know if they pay for that. Or you you get the point. It could be having to pay for it. So it could be having to pay for a software. If you do not differentiate between your money and the company money, it's just going to create so much imbalance because you find yourself, you could find yourself having to spend much of the money you, you earn to either take care of yourself, your personal needs, it could be toiletries or maybe you need to travel or whatever. You probably take all the money to do that. Or you spend all the money on the business and you start feeling like you're suffering. Everything is about creating balance. Do you get? You want to take care of yourself and you also want to take care of your business. So it's something that you can sustain. I said, um, okay, which is what I've said. I say pay yourself um, a certain amount of your earnings monthly. All the money you earn as a freelancer is not yours to give. And I said invest some of your income in your business. It could be tools or resources, which is basically what I've just said. And now another thing I'm going to say is consider going from a freelancer to an agency. So I attended a conference. I'm just going to use I attended a conference um two months ago that was Brighton SEO. And one of there was this what's it called now? Vendor. Yeah, it's called they're called vendors. So for this vendor I like met and they offer SEO services because if you know about Brighton SEO, it's basically typically like an SEO event. So of course they offer SEO services. What they do is they have a team of writers. They have the ones that will do the whole keywords for you. They have it's an agency basically. They do everything that has to do with up, um, search engine optimization for your website. So what that means is if you want someone to write, they take care of that. Someone to do the keyword research. Someone to do your site audit. They do everything as an agency. Now, why am I telling you about this? What I'm telling you about that is because 
most of your most clients what they want is they want one person that can they don't they don't want they want soft life everybody wants soft life you get so if you consider growing from being a freelancer at an agency what that means is as you've been working over time you, you may have identified that there are some things your clients need but you can't do it but it's related to the service you offer but you just can't do it or even if you can do it you probably don't have the time to do it or you don't have the strength to do it, or it's probably not something you you enjoy doing. So I know some people that can, let me say, you could probably know how to build a website, but you're not really, you don't really like building websites. You can do it, but it's not really something you like to do. So it could also be something you could outsource to somebody that, that, that can do it. So as an agency, you are now moving from just one person to hiring maybe two or three other people that can that can offer services related to the service you offer. Do you get? So when someone when a client comes to you and says, um, for example, I need um I need this ebook. I need someone that can write I'm always using writing. Whatever. I need someone that can write an ebook for me. And you can write. Do you get? What you could do is but you don't edit. For example, I write, but I do not like to edit. I don't like editing people's work or proofreading people's work. It's, I hate it. If I wanted to start a freelance agency now, what I could do is I would offer writing services. And when a client comes, I'm always like, all right, I'm, I need this ebook written. In fact, there's people that don't write ebooks, but they write. So if there's something else you write, and maybe your client just comes to you one day and says, oh, I need um, an ebook. You can say, oh, I can offer that service. And my agency offers that service. Now, you are no longer a person. You are now an agency. You're, you cannot say my agency offers that service. So what you do is you take care of the, your agency, takes care of writing the ebook, takes care of formatting it. Maybe the person also wants it to be on Amazon or any of all these um, publishing platforms. The agency takes care of writing the ebook. You then go and tell the client that we could, in fact, apart from just writing this ebook for you, we can help you get it published on Amazon. We can format it for Kindle publishing. We can also help you design the cover page. Now you're bringing the work service of a, of, um, a designer because I mean, anybody that writes an ebook wants a cover page in it. Wants, yeah, it's called a cover page. Wants a cover page, yeah. And they're like, oh, I also have um, a graphic designer that can design the cover page for you. In fact, if they, if your book, if you read the book, and I also have someone that can then we can also, not I have someone. We can also remember you're now an agency. You're no longer a writer. You're no longer one person. We can also offer you editing and proofreading services. Do you get? So now. From just the clients needing one thing. In fact, the client actually needs all five things. But from the client telling you, oh, I need one thing, you're able to upscale, not upscale, upsell, and tell the person that we can offer you these five services or these six services or whatever number of services related to that service the person wants. And the person is going to be happy to give it to you. Do you know why? Because it's easier that way. Instead of having to hire six freelancers and start telling them, okay, you, you're done with the ebook. Okay, are you edit? And then having to manage six people. It's just easier for the person to meet you as an agency and tell you, this is what I want. And you, tell, and you just give the person bill. And it's, it's going to help you make more money or help your agency make more money and probably help the client spend less money. Because... If the client wants to hire six people, it's probably going to pay the six people whatever rate they bargain. And by the time he calculates how much he has to pay all those six people, it's going to be more than what he would have paid one agency, probably. So what I'm just saying is, when you upscale from being just a freelancer, one person, to being an agency, you're going to be highly likely to make more money. And remember, you don't have to do all the job. You, and you don't even really have to be a company company. In that sense, what I mean by a company company is you don't really have to maybe go and then rent an office and um, have chairs and be paying for rent and paying for electricity bill or whatever. What you could do is you may know five or, six, or three other people, three or four other people or whatever, other people that offer these other services. Let's say you know someone that does proofreading and you write. Then you know someone that does proofreading and editing very well. You also know someone that is into graphics design. Um, I can help you do illustrations for the book and book cover design. Then you probably um, yeah. Then you just you can just reach out to these people. But what you should do is 
have i'm not going i'm not here to start teaching how to run an agency or whatever but you just have to understand that you have to work with competent people you have to work with people that can deliver very well else you're just going to stand in your image or reputation or whatever so what i've said is you command more pay as an agency every sale of service has something that complements them so writing for example if you write it's not just enough to say i know how to write you should start learning how to do seo it's now almost as basic as knowing how to write. It's now like a very basic need as well. So you should be able to tell your clients, oh, I can help you do SEO research. I can even help you, um, I can start help. I can also help you publish your work on WordPress or whatever. What you're also doing in this case is you're making yourself indispensable. Do you get it? I, I, I know I've gotten one or two gigs because maybe the interview says, oh, do you know how to use WordPress? Do you know how to use SEO tools or something? And if some, it's something I, could, I can do. So I just tell the person, oh, yes, I can help you get your work published. On, I can help you publish on WordPress too. So they just create a, a back-end account, a, an account for me, and I can publish back-end and every other thing. So what I'm doing now is, even though I was not paid maybe extra for publishing on WordPress or for helping them upload on WordPress, it's just much easier to have me write and put it on WordPress than having to, it just takes some work off them. Do you get? So I'm just thinking now, I'm just saying basically think of how you can take more stress off the clients. It will help you become indispensable or become less dispensable because everybody's dispensable. It could just help you get less dispensable. It could also help you put, like, have more edge or have an edge over other people that can't offer some of the services you can offer you get so i say now something very important you're not limited to up or fiverr and this is one of the paradoxical things i'm i think I, i'm saying because i have a class where i teach about up so it sounds a bit like oh, when you teach about up and you say you're not limited to Opoc. i need you to understand that you are not limited to up or fiverr and I've talked, I've published something like this on my Facebook before. You're not limited to Upwork or Fiverr. There are so many other. In fact, you're not limited to platforms. You can do without Upwork or Fiverr. Yes, you can actually do without Upwork or Fiverr. There are great places to start, but I would also say they are not um, except if you want to stay on Upwork or Fiverr. I will tell you if you want to have a long run. If you want to have soft life, if you want to, if you don't want to, if you want to have something more stable, if you want to have stable income, you can go for companies. You should go for companies. Do you get like what I mean by going for companies? Pop, companies also publish on Fiverr and Upwork. They also come on Upwork to look for freelancers because as much as freelancing is a very flexible model for the freelancer, it's also a very flexible model for the companies because when you're hiring a freelancer, you don't really you don't have to pay um, insurance, pension. All those things do you get it's it's also um, beneficial for both the client and the company so it's not like the companies are doing a favor you're also doing them a favor it's a win-win situation basically so because i know people that say um, I, i've tried up i've tried fiber it's not working for me maybe this freelancing thing is not for me there's some like now i'm not saying up or fiber does not work for people it does back to back studies like I have students that almost every week they send me testimonials or whatever. I also read a lot of posts or comments or whatever from people. Oh, I got my first um, work on Upwork or this is my whatever work on Upwork or this is how much I'm earning. Like, I see a lot of people sharing stories about earning on Upwork, my students, myself, everything. So what I'm saying is, I'm just trying to explain this so nobody starts thinking that I'm saying that you cannot, make, you cannot get um, gigs on Upwork or Fiverr. You can but you should not limit yourself to these platforms which takes me back to first thing i said have a system that brings clients for you and that's because upwork or fiverr except you have a contract with 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 um what is it called with the client to meet them even if you have a contract self you can still well any contract can still be ended do you get even if you have a full-time job from then it can also still be ended but what i'm just saying is these platforms are not the only places that you can get freelance platforms generally. So it's not just Upwork or Fiverr. It's freelancer.com. It's, I think, there's so many freelance platforms anyways. So whatever freelance platform it is, you're not limited there. You can offer freelance services anywhere. You can get the clients from anywhere. You can get a client from church. You can get the clients from LinkedIn. You can get the clients from 
I'm thinking of strange places that I probably people get got clients from. But basically, you can get a client from anywhere. So do not think that if you don't get a client from Upwork or, or Fiverr or wherever, then you cannot freelance. It's a lie. You can. Limiting yourself to platforms keeps you hunting. So when you're on Upwork or Fiverr, a lot of times you have to always be the one or like checking for gigs on these platforms to submit. And honestly speaking, in the beginning, when you start, it's interesting. It's very interesting. I know it's interesting, very sweet. Especially if, like when you get your clients, it's just very sweet too. Oh my God, I got my first client. This is my second client, third client, fourth client, fifth client, tenth client. Work is going very well. But the point, having to always submit proposals can be tiring. The only time you can really enjoy work or you can enjoy this platform is when you then have a client that you just know that. Like I, I gave an example of a client that works with for a year plus. I've also had other clients I've worked with for a long um, period of time. But the thing, as I said earlier, is that nothing is guaranteed. They get, at the point you want a higher pay, they may not be able to afford to pay you that much. At the point, anything could be going wrong in their country or whatever. Like, we just saw what came up in Russia and Ukraine. And it's just affecting people in even other parts of the world. And they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I have to end my contract with you. X, Y, Z is happening. We saw what COVID, when COVID came out and... People had to say, I'm sorry, I can't afford to keep paying you. So if you limit yourself to these platforms, it's it's not good. Do you get? So the other, and as um, in this place, I say, limit yourself to freelance platform keeps you hunting. You get exhausted hunting. Hunting, just think of it as a hunt, always going out to go and kill animal. Any day, does not go to kill animal. Does not go to kill. <laughs> it's just, he does. He probably doesn't have food for that day or for the next two, three days. But when you're a farmer or a shepherd, what you're doing is your content on these platforms or whatever system you have built are like the plants. And now we know we plants, we have biennial crops and um, perennial crops and whatever. Some of them, sometimes you get a client today, tomorrow. Sometimes you have to wait for a while. And the truth is that when you have content published on these platforms or when you have built a system for yourself, it just keeps bringing clients for you. You can have a client that says, oh, I saw this your content you posted. It was because of this content that I reached out to you. The content in question may be something you posted two, three weeks ago, two, three years ago. For example, the class I host on Upwork, I still get people telling me, oh, I watch a video on YouTube and that's why I'm reaching out to you. That video was published on YouTube last, last year. Yeah, last year. Do you get? But this is, is it last year, last two years? Last year, I think it's last year, but whatever. But it's up to a year now. It's more than a year. It's, if it's not last year, then it's, it's up to two years now. Basically, what I'm saying is, and this is a system, do you get, that I've created for myself. There's also Facebook. I also get people say, oh, I don't know the last time I published on Facebook. It's been a while I published on Facebook. And it's even been a longer while I published about Upwork or anything. But I still get people reach out to me from Facebook and say, oh, I saw this thing you posted on Facebook. And that's why I'm reaching out to you. This is building systems. This is building something that helps you keep getting clients even in the future when you're not publishing about it. I've also had someone reach out to In fact, I've put in several um, LinkedIn, um, what's it called? Opportunities from LinkedIn. And they're like, oh, I, I saw this thing you posted um, so and so time. I'm reaching out to you because of this thing I posted. And I don't have like so many followers on these platforms. Do you get? And another thing that I think, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful I even mentioned this thing about followers. Another thing I think that makes people not really um double down on, on social media and the rest is because they're like, oh, people don't really engage with my content or I don't have so many likes, I don't have so many followers. If you're on, on these platforms, what you should be considering first and foremost is giving value. The longest client that I've gotten on and I, that I got from LinkedIn has not commented on my post before. Or if she has maybe only once. I don't know. But before the first day she reached out to me, I had not seen her comment or anything on my post. But she just reached out to me one and like and that was how we kicked off. So sometimes why 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 I mentioned this is because sometimes people that are going to buy your products or buy your services are not going to be there liking and re reposting or whatever. So don't be focused on um, engagements, which is the core vanity metrics. So don't be focused on, um, I don't have um, so many followers, or I don't have so many likes or whatever. What you should be focused on is publishing 
helpful contents or whatever and showing up you get so as i said you become a farmer if you become a farmer or it's easier it's easier to keep that momentum and to earn more when you become a farmer or a shepherd so what i mean by farming and shepherding is just what i've said have a system that also always helps you have people coming to you attracting the kind of people you want else you just get very um very tired and take linkedin very seriously if you're looking for international opportunities i i i don't know how else to say this but take linkedin very very seriously take linkedin very seriously honestly speaking if you're looking for international opportunities especially if you don't have the opportunity to travel yet that you have not traveled out of nigeria does not mean that you should not engage with people that are not in nigeria tickets and how do you even have the perspective of people not in nigeria if you do not have a platform or if you're not in a platform that helps you engage people not in nigeria take linkedin very very seriously you get better most better paying clients that i've heard of or whatever and i've gotten are from linkedin they pay you more because most of them are like they're not really looking for people they can the thing with opera and Fiverr and all these other um, platforms is that there are so many people there and that some at the point in fact you see freelancers you can publish that you're willing to pay twenty dollars or hundred dollars for this work and then you see a freelancer that come and say oh i can actually do this work for 50 pound 50 dollars you know you publish that you want to you you're willing to pay hundred dollars for this what what happens then is that people start seeing all these other personal oh i can actually get cheaper labor here then you get and then you're contesting with people that are happy to collect twenty dollars or something for a work that you would have been you should be charging hundred dollars for so but on linkedin that's not the case most times i'm not saying all the time people are not going to try and um charge you less or what, um, pay you less or whatever but most times you're just on linkedin and pe- people that they are well people also put their profiles on linkedin but you just know that you're able to use it's the chances of you connecting with ceos and execs and whatever is high on linkedin than on Opoc or Fiverr or all these other platforms, except when companies come to hire on these platforms, then yes. But for the chances of connecting with CEOs or people that are going to pay you very well because they have the money, it's just way higher on LinkedIn than these other platforms, which is also why, if you remember I said earlier, that you should not limit yourself to Opoc or Fiverr. Do you get? It's a very great place to start. If I'm going to be honest with you, I'll tell you to spread your tentacles to LinkedIn, which is why in in my class now, I have why I teach is both Upwork and LinkedIn. The class is on both Upwork and LinkedIn, not just Upwork, because I know that LinkedIn is very important. You can get clients that are going to just pay you like times 10 of what clients on LinkedIn on Upwork are going to pay you. So take LinkedIn very seriously. Take LinkedIn very, very seriously. This session is not teaching about LinkedIn or whatever. You can either join my class for that or you can find someone that host a class on LinkedIn to teach you how to do that. Then this is a conversation I had with a friend. He he also does Upwork on LinkedIn. So I, th- I think one time I'll just ask him like, hey, what's up? How is business going and everything? And he, and he told me that he got a client from LinkedIn. If you can see the chat, I said initially, I thought she saw my profile on Upwork and she contacted me, contacted me via LinkedIn, but that was not the case. So he had posted, which is exactly, I'm even happy that I, I put this up because the contents he saw, Oh, I'm not supposed to share this much info with you guys. Okay, but it's fine anyways. Um, nobody's name is showing here and all that. I thought I covered this. I would have sworn I covered this. So, whatever. So the the post she saw that made him contact that made her contact him was something he posted I think two three years ago. But she contacted him because of that. Now, if you remember, everything still is back to number one or number two. Have a system that's always bringing clients for you and farming and shepherding and everything. As a farmer, you are planting seeds. You may not eat that food today or tomorrow, or you may not eat these seeds that month or the next two months. Some of these seeds are things that are going to bring you fruits in the next two, three years. So sometimes you also have to be very patient. But there's also a very thin line between patients, between when you to just be very patient and when you should actually change strategy. Do you get? I see freelancers, they come in today and they're like, oh, I've been sending proposals on Upwork, I know you're getting clients. And I've sent two proposals, three proposals. Even if you sent 10, I'm sorry to say, 
but I'm not really sorry. But sometimes even 10 proposals may not get you the first client, your first client. It could be the 11th one. It could be the 12th one. It could be the first and the second one. The very first client that got on Upwork was the first proposal I sent. But even as I went on, I found out that it was luck. And why I say it was luck is because when I, when, after getting that client, I had, it was difficult for me to get a second client. The only thing that just kept me a bit sane was that, okay, this client was still bringing gigs. But when I wanted to start earning more, as I told you guys earlier, and when I said I wanted to start earning more, I knew that I had to start getting more clients. Do you get? And it was just hard for me to get another one. That was when I realized that the first client I even got was by luck. And why I say it was by luck is because I can't even remember if I actually, I think the, the proposal I submitted was just more like, oh, I've read your your, your um, what's it called the job description and i can do this that was i think what i sent what helped me i would say is the samples i sent because he asked questions like um attach your samples and i attached like two three samples then he asked do you have experience writing about this and i had you game so i'll really say what helped me get that job was the samples i sent and not the proposal i wrote because all i when i went back to to read like ah what is going on why am i not getting clients I just um, realized that all I sent in that proposal was just, yes, I can do the job. That was all I sent. But when I needed, I needed to get more clients, of course, I could not just type, typing, oh, yes, I can do the job, was not getting me the job. Do you get? That was when I had to start looking for help from people that were already doing it very well on, free, on Upwork. And that was when I found out that ah, even if I stayed on Upwork for the next, <laughs> even if I submitted one million proposals, I may not have gotten a second client. So, the challenge I found with a lot of freelancers is that they start freelancing today and they want to start making the money today. It doesn't. It sometimes works like that, but what is the chance? It's like one percent out of hundred, which is like zero point zero zero one, very low. Do you get? So when you start freelancing, again, 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 build the system. Then, when you have the opportunity to switch from freelancing. To doing full time remote job, I think you should totally consider it. Which now this is the paradoxical thing I'm saying, and as I said earlier, in the beginning it's very nice to submit proposals and you get you get the gig from the proposals. It's like when you're wooing somebody, or it's it's just that very the whole first time excitement getting what you want. But the truth is, when you want to settle down, you don't want to keep wooing people. You just want to be able to woo one person and you're able to build a long relationship from there and is happily ever after you get even though in the case of work it may not be happily ever after it could be so what i'm just saying is when the opportunity comes if you find an opportunity to have a long-term remote um work or whatever it's good to take it especially if the pay is good there's really no flex there's no emotional stability there's less emotional stability attached to freelancing. And what, what I mean by that is freelancing is, 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 the whole journey of freelancing is very funny. One month you're doing very well. In fact, you have clients, you're even outsourcing, you're even looking forward to give work to. Another month, maybe only one client or zero client. It happens. It, that's happened to me. The times when I could have like work and I'm looking for, okay, who we'll handle this job, who we'll handle this job for me. There are also times where I'm like, or it's as if all my clients will just go for a meeting and say, let's not give, okay, of course, not that they go for a meeting or whatever, but it's just as if I'm like, what's going on? I had so much work last month. This month, um, I'm having only maybe one or two things or three things to do. Do you get? So if the opportunity comes for, and this is even me that has, um, well, this was way before I started doing, um, being more intentional about having a system or whatever, but I'm just sharing this to let you know that freelancing is not always, I woke up in pyjamas. As many people post, oh, I walk up from the comfort of my room in pajamas. I sleep when I want. I wake up when I want. Sorry, bro. It's it's not as sweet as that. Honestly speaking, it's not as sweet as that. So if the opportunity for a full time remote job comes, take it. That does not mean you you stop freelancing. It does not mean you stop freelancing. What just happens then is that okay, you know, you then learn how to manage your time better. You know that this is how many hours in a day or in, or in a week I need to do this job to get this project done. And you can also stick with freelancing from there. So what I'm saying is don't dismiss. Well, it also depends on your plans or whatever um, you want for yourself. 
but if you want stability if you ask if you want some stability if you want to have at least you know that every month i'm making xyz amount of money because i'm doing this remote job then it's a, going to be a good opportunity to take it and while you're doing that one you can still you can still be freelancing you get you can still be getting all that gigs if a client comes i'll say okay no if a client comes even if you don't really have the time you can think of someone very competent that can do that job and it will be as if you did it so the clients also be pleased at the feedback or the delivery then you can take it you can share the money with the person you get but don't because you want to answer freelancer and an opportunity for remote key comes you throw it away it's not good it won't really help you so yeah another thing i talk about is network at an event so a lot of people will start freelancing i think well, let me not say a lot, but just usually people would. Oh God, I'm shaking my table again. Who are rather introverts? You get who rather just stay at home and walk down, go out and meet human beings. Could be tiring having to deal with humans. So, but as a freelancer, do not think that okay because you freelance, you don't you don't have to go out again. No, it's very good to go out network. You don't know where your next freelancing opportunity will come from. You don't know where your next gig is going to come from. It could be from a conference, it could be from a an event, it could be from anywhere. So go out freelance um network. Another thing I talk about is service. Service, service. So I've also gotten very good opportunities. And funny thing is when I when, a couple of times I've volunteered for one thing or the other. Well I'm not so much there's a particular experience, but I'm not I, I can't share it. <laughs> I can't share it here. But I've also gotten something very, very good from volunteering. Do you get and when I was in the whole volunteering, I did not even really think of it as something like I was just doing it. Do you get I was not really doing it as okay, this is exactly what it was going to lead me into. But I did not even know that in the whole volunteering experience, the boss was um kind of observing what I was doing and everyone she's like when the opportunity came for me to have the gig, she um the person gave it to me. So what I'm saying is, sometimes offering your service for free could also be an opportunity for you to get your next job. But don't always think, but I think of it, even apart from getting your next job, it could also be, it's a way of giving back. It's a way of giving. And of course, giving is always planting seeds. That opportunity, um, the reward you may get may not be in a gig, maybe in something else. Also very good. But just... If the opportunities you have to volunteer to offer your services for free, then you should do it. Now, I'm not saying you should just offer your services for free everywhere, whatever. This is where you also use your sense. Just think of, okay, maybe in church, maybe a charity organization, or maybe XYZ. Just think of ways you can offer your services as a way of planting seeds. Then don't be shy when it comes to selling your service. You cannot afford to be shy. Your bills are not shy. Nothing is shy. <laughs> Nothing that will collect money from you is shy. So when it comes to selling your services, be it offline, be it online, just in person, you should always be very courageous and bold to sell your services. So yeah, that's it. If you have any questions, I'll try to visit this video. Okay, I'll actually get notifications. So if you have any questions, you can drop them in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them as soon as I can. And what else? Yeah, if you found this helpful, if you know any person that is struggling to build a stable income as a freelancer, please share this with the person. But even more importantly, even more importantly, even more importantly, please, please, and please, do not just watch this video and move on with your life. I will need you to, all those things you are writing down, start thinking of how you can start implementing them. As I said earlier, some of these things, you may not see the usefulness today or tomorrow or even next month or next two months but i guarantee you they are very it's going to be very fruitful it's they are all very very helpful tips that i have shared i have shared from my experience i've also shared from experiences a couple of friends have also shared with me and i shared this so you don't make like mistakes i have made or mistakes any other of my friends or whatever anybody's experience i've shared here has made so very very important Act on what you've gotten from this video. Thank you. Ciao.